victory. This one performed at the Singapore General Hospital has captured the attention of more than 100 neurosurgeons in the Asian Pacific. They traveled to the hospital to learn about a procedure which marries computer technology with a technique called virtual reality imaging to operate on the brain. Singapore's SBC filed this report. Neurosurgery using virtual reality goggles. The brain is marked and scanned, the position of the tumor identified. With these markers, the virtual reality goggles and the robotic arm, the surgeon can navigate accurately through the brain. Through the goggles, he sees a three-dimensional image of where the pointer is in relation to the tumor. This makes brain surgery safer and less painful for the patient. The openings in the skulls we have to make are much smaller than they were before. When an operation is smaller, there's less pain involved in the scalp. There's less risk for the patient because there's less risk of bleeding in the uh, opening of, of the head. But more importantly, internally, if we're able to navigate very precisely, we can Im avoid important areas of the brain. Tan Hung Chu was operated on just one week ago. He's now up and about and can even look into his own brain. Oh, this I'm very curious as to, to look at the, how, how, how is it that they actually perform the operation for me. For 149 patients here, the reality of a better life has been made more optimistic by virtual reality. Virtual reality has become very important in science and technology. One important area is the application of virtual reality in medicine. In medicine, we find that virtual reality has its best applications in surgery. And in fact, it is in brain surgery where virtual reality has taken root and has really developed itself. There are several systems that we use for brain surgery. One system is called the viewing wand system. And in this system, we take images of the human brain prior to surgery, and these can be MRI or CD scan images. And making use of a computer workstation, we then recreate in three dimensions that patient's face, brain, and anatomical structures within the head. This reconstruction is then used in the actual operation to guide the surgeon to navigate within the human brain. By making use of a virtual reality goggles, the images from the computer actually float in front of the, of the surgeon's eye and they can be superimposed onto the operating field. By doing this, we make surgery for the removal of brain tumors or blood vessel malformations much more accurate. Also, the openings within the head become very much smaller. We can uh, remove the lesion much more completely by making use of these kinds of virtual reality interfaces. Another area in which we make use of a system which also makes use of virtual reality but without a pair of goggles is the stereotactic microscope. This microscope again makes use of images taken prior to surgery. The images are reconstructed on a computer workstation and the computer workstation is then linked with the microscope. What this means is that as we look at the human brain through the microscope, there are actually heads up display signals within the microscope which will tell us where we are within the human brain. The three-dimensional reconstructions of the patient's brain can also be imported through the microscope in this heads-up display. The, the surgeon, therefore, has both his hands free to navigate within the human brain using the stereotactic microscope. Finally, the last area in which virtual reality interfaces play a role is in one of the most least invasive methods of surgery available today, and this is called radio surgery. Computer-controlled radiation beams are planned and directed into the human brain to treat blood vessel problems and brain tumors. Again, we make use of three-dimensional images like this. To recreate the patient's brain, we then actually program a computer which will direct radiation beams in various directions into the patient's head so as to actually destroy the patient's brain tumor or the blood vessel malformation that, so that it will not bleed and cause problems in the future. These are all virtual reality interfaces which are being applied today. A lot of research is going into improving these interfaces. In the future, we expect there will be a true immersive virtual reality interface available for doctors so that we can immerse ourselves in a virtual patient, actually travel throughout the human body, and then decide and customize treatments that will be of benefit to that patient without even having to do an operation or actually open up that patient.